and it was raining. <coughs> and so we're wandering along, and I'm talking to some girl, guy about theory or something, and this girl walks past one of those girls that you don't see that often, well, you do in Budapest, actually, you see them every three minutes, but one of those girls where you just feel like you've been shot, like you're doing the Uzi dance, like 80s style, yeah? And, um, and this girl walks past, and then I go back and I'm, and I'm go theory, theory, and Sasha just like slaps me in the face. And he's like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh yeah, teaching, demonstrating sex. I ran back, I stopped, I got in front of this girl, I stopped her with my amazing intent, and I said, who the fuck are you? And she's like, I'm Anna. And she's holding this um, like newspaper over her hair because it's raining, it's this romantic scene. And I said, you're stunning. Uh, I have to go, tell me, one th tell me three things about you. And she told me a month later that when I asked her that, the first thing she thought of was, I like having sex on a table. But she didn't tell me that because I probably couldn't have handled that because men can't handle that kind of information. So she said, I like chocolate and reading and barbs. And I went, that's fucking a really interesting mix. I'm going to get your number and I'll talk to you later. Number, run away. <coughs> Had to leave Budapest, continue the Euro tour, return for the next Euro tour, called her up. Uh, I said, would you just like to meet near my place? She said, yes. We met outside my place. She had a bottle of warm champagne, cheap sh champagne, which we never drank. We went upstairs, uh, and then we went into the bedroom, and we had sex. Right. What did I learn from this encounter? I learned one important thing. I learned that 1993 was a really good year for Hungarian gymnasts who like to dress up as Egyptian slave girls. That's all I learned. This was a culmination of many, many years of me going out, doing this, and getting slaughtered on all levels, to the point where a seduction happened flawlessly and happened almost effortlessly and happened within accumulation of minutes. But I didn't learn anything from that interaction. It was good, and I encourage you guys to enjoy those moments when they happen. But I want to tell you about a couple of times when I really learnt some severe lessons that lifted me up a notch. I mentioned this girl yesterday, Irina, the Russian. Yeah, when I was talking about when I was in bed with her and this, this rich dude called up and said, I can give you whatever you want. Yeah. How I met her was, it was 2006 or seven or something like that. Um, I had gotten into seduction formally. I was really serious about this. And at that time, I was broke and I was on the doll. For those of you who are in internet land, that means on government benefits. Yeah. Thankfully, Australia is a, a country where they will pay you to be lazy uh, for a period of time. Like, I, I talk to my Serbian girlfriends about this, and I'm like, they're like, what did you do for these 10 years when you had no job? And I was like, um, well, I, I did whatever I wanted, and, and the government paid me the equivalent of two months' wages for you every week. Um, <laughs> because I don't know why. She just looks at me with disgust. Um, <laughs> like, if I'd been born in Serbia, I would not be here doing this. Thank you. Thank you, Australia. Good country. Um, so, how did I meet this girl? I was at Centrelink, which is the Dole office, the government benefits office, internet people, and I was dressed like, a, like Liam back in the day, I had this coat that I bought in India when I was a hippie that was from Kashmir, and I thought it was really cool. I thought it was like kind of like some Eastern wizard thing. It just looked like a sack, basically, with some embroidery on it. Um, I had some tie-dyed pants on. I had my kung fu shoes on because I was always ready, <laughs> and uh, and probably some you know retarded Indian shirt. I looked like uh, yeah an Indian hobo, uh, like hippie hobo. And I'm waiting in line with my form, with the jobs that I pretended that I, that I was looking for, which I certainly wasn't, and. There at the front of the queue, I see this amazing figure, and then I hear something which just drives me crazy, which is a Russian accent. You know, I'm just, it, I don't know if it's wired into my blood because I'm quarter Ukrainian or something, uh, but I hear that accent and it just drives me nuts, and you don't hear much of that in Australia. I hear this girl and she's like, no, this not problem and something, and she's like, you know, scolding the person behind the desk. And, uh, and then she just turns and sweeps out of the, to walk out of the sampling office. And I'm thinking, at this point, I'd been approaching a lot, and I thought I was getting kind of good, and I was, and I had built this identity of me as a PUA because, you know, in the Melbourne seduction scene, people knew of me, and when they saw me out, they're like, PUA, gay, yeah, man, all that kind of stuff. And uh, and this is part of 
my identity at the time. And I saw this girl walk out and I went, fuck, that's the hottest girl I've ever seen in the flesh. To this day, she's the top three or four girls that I've slept with in terms of beauty. And I saw her walk, walk out and I'm like, I, ha I, can't, I can't. I mean, in terms of bad places to approach girls, you have STD clinic, unemployment office. Uh, I don't know, what after, what's after that? Morgue or something, I don't know. Yeah, bad places to meet girls. Don't, does not demonstrate high value at all. I was literally a bum. And as she walked out, and I'm having this feeling, this, this just sinking doubt and just and worthiness, I'm like, fuck, I'm just so not there. Yeah, and why is she in here? I don't know. Yeah. And that was the moment where I had a breakthrough. 